Now, continuing with the buzz out of the Pacific Rim, President Obama spent the last few days contacting world leaders to seal the deal for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This would tie together about 40 percent of the world's economy. That hotly contested accord would phase out thousands of import tariffs as well as other barriers on international trade. The TPP would also set up uniform rules on corporations' intellectual property and even open up the Internet in communist Vietnam. Now, one of America's biggest opponents to the bill, the Ford Motor Company, quickly issued a statement saying that this agreement would not meaningfully arrest currency manipulation by the U.S. and its trading partners. So joining me now to discuss this is Tom Hartman, the host of The Big Picture here on RT. Tom, thanks for running over here to talk about this very important my, topic. My pleasure, Manila. It's nice to be here with you. Now, the, the White House says that the passing the TPP means, I mean, they're selling it to us in a way that they're saying that it's more jobs for the middle class mm -hmm. and it's going to build a stronger economy. But as someone that, that is very familiar with this subject, um, and, and you talk about it on your show as you, as you did uh, earlier today, earlier this year and ongoing, um, how, how do you explain this to the millions of Americans out there watching this and going, hey, that doesn't sound like a bad deal, Tom? Yeah, well, you know, here's the logic that's, that's being pitched. There's millions of consumers in the Pacific Rim, right? Uh, Vietnam, Brunei, Malaysia, who just love to buy American stuff. And so if we just open the market to them, they will buy more American stuff. The problem with that is twofold. Number one, uh, most, with the exception of Japan, all of these countries are far poorer than the United States, some of them right. profoundly poorer. I don't think Vietnamese consumers are going to be buying multi-thousand dollar American, well, they're not, not going to be buying Fords, for right. example, which is why Ford is saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, the stuff that we would be exporting into markets like that would be relatively meaningless in terms of value. There's just not enough money in those markets. On the other hand, in those markets, there's lots of folks who are willing to work cheap, cheap, and there are sure. countries that are willing to say, oh, yeah, we enforce environmental regulations, mm, you know, and just kind of look the other way. And so just expect to see the exact same thing we saw after NAFTA, the same mm -hmm. thing that we saw after CAFTA, the same thing we saw after the GATT and WTO, which is another couple million American jobs going overseas and never coming back uh, well n until or unless we get somebody who as, as a president is going to change these laws or ignore them this is the good thing because this is not being done as a treaty even though it should be a treaty it's a right. it's an international relationship treaties require two-thirds of the senate they knew they could never get that so they're calling it a trade agreement as a trade agreement a future president could repudiate it now uh, i want to switch over to to talking about meds and doctors. Mm. Uh, doctors Without Borders criticized the TPP, saying that it'll, quote, raise the price of medicine for millions by unnecessarily extending monopolies and further delaying price-lowering generic competition. And they also tweeted this. They said, big losers are patients in developing countries. Negative impact will be enormous. Now, with such catastrophic implications on on the greater public health. I mean, across the globe, uh, how can this part of the deal be justified? It well, the the deal was negotiated in secret by corporate lobbyists and lawyers uh, on behalf of corporate lobbyists and lawyers on behalf of big transnational corporations. The part with pharmaceuticals deals mostly that we know about anyway deals mostly with what are called biologicals, which is pharmaceuticals that come out of living things. We make like the streptomycin drugs mm -hmm. are made out of bacteria, strep, right. strep bacteria. Uh, penicillin is made from mold, you know, so these are, these are considered biologicals. The hot new thing right now is biologicals like Herceptin, which is used for breast cancer. It's $100,000 for treatment with for Herceptin. Treatment. And, and w w there's a whole new variety of these biologicals coming out, mostly for cancer, but for a whole variety of very serious illnesses. And the drug companies want to jack the prices up and they want to be able to hold on in this in this ag agreement for eight years they hold an exclusive patent on this and 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 they don't it's not just that they have the patent they do not have to reveal how it was made so nobody else can take the knowledge right. about how this was developed and develop their own variations or their own you know, I mean it's it's it, this is not only um, hurting consumers but it's also going to be a real hit to researchers. Right, and we saw the public outrage uh, last week when the, when I forget his name, the guy last week that jacked up the prices for. Yeah, yeah so, crazy hedge fund guy. That's who, right. Who decided to we're, become a pharmaceutical. That's attorney. right. Um, now, uh, earlier we were talking about um, the, man, uh, the currency manipulation, mm -hmm. and I want to go ahead and bring up this, uh, this graphic this that we have here. This is about VAT taxes. 
this VAT taxes. Tell us a little bit more about this because you were covering this sure. on the show. Yeah, the way a VAT tax works, it's called a value added tax, which is what VAT stands for. At every stage during the manufacture of something, a small tax is added. So when steel is made into flat steel, there's a small tax. When the flat steel is made into a car door, there's a small tax. When the door is put on the car, there's a small tax because you're adding value. So when you add all that up, if we use, for example, uh, Mexico, for example, Mexico has a 16% VAT tax on average. So when the way that these are being used now, because we've done away with tariffs, import taxes, mm -hmm. and so and and Mexico is saying, oh, we'll do away with tariffs too, no problem, right? They did that with NAFTA, but they've got the 16% VAT tax, which means that if Ford wants to export a car into Mexico, they will be hit with a 16% tax at the border on the way into Mexico. It's a VAT tax. On the other hand, if a Mexican car is exported into the United States, they discount it by 16% because Americans aren't Mexicans, and so we don't have to pay the VAT tax because VAT taxes are only for the citizens of the country in which they exist. It's a one-way tax. It's a 32% effective tariff. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a one-way tax. That's, you know, lots, lots more is going to be unfolded, obviously, in the, in the coming weeks. Tom, thank you so much for, for joining us to, to talk about this very important topic. Uh, that was Tom Hartman, host of The Big Picture, right here on RT.